Well, let's get this show on the road. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Alyssa Orange here alongside Mike Irwin. Hope you're having a great Sunday. Now, Mike, here's some good news. We're three Sundays away from talking about actual football. The bad news is we still just have to talk about fall camp. So that's what we're <laughs> going to talk about now. Two scrimmages under their belt. Mike, start us off. You know, ever since full-scale workout started, we've heard mostly good news about the quarterbacks, especially Felipe Franks. And that's been good for the fans who've been shell-shocked by the quarterback problems of the past two seasons. But you had to know it was eventually going to happen. Quarterbacks hitting some big speed bumps. Sam Pittman wasn't specific about which quarterback did what, but there were three picks in last Friday's scrimmage. So after a dominating effort in the first scrimmage, things went backwards in the second one, and Pittman did not sugarcoat it. Not good. I mean, we didn't look good today. Uh, we didn't make good decisions. Uh, we have to get better there. We have to play with more confidence. We have to protect them better. Uh, uh, but uh, from a week ago to this week, it just uh, it, it was not acceptable play by that position, and they know it, and, and uh, certainly we'll get better. Now he went on to say that uh, he's still proud of the quarterbacks and they're doing a good job. They just got to bounce back this week, Alyssa. Yeah, we talked to wide receiver Trey Knox this week. He says he loves Franks, of course, with his veteran arm. But when you look at this wide receiver group, Mike, they've got really three top guys. That's Knox, Traylon Burks, and Mike Woods. But what about the depth? Well, Sam Pittman praised guys like Davion Warren and TJ Hammonds. But then he said they're thin there right now with some injuries to certain guys. Trey Knox, very complimentary of those guys who are behind him as well. Devion, TJ, they've been playing so fast this whole camp. I mean, they're, they're speedy guys. And just having that speed on the outside, they can just take the top off the, the whole defense. And we can air it out, too, when we need a big play down the field. Guys, uh, Kendall Catalan's been playing his tail off. I mean, Karch Gardner's been having a solid camp. Also, I think as a room, we're pretty deep. I mean, we can play. If somebody needs to come, come out of play, then somebody go get him and go make a play. Mike, I'll be honest, I'm more worried about the tight ends than I am really any group on that <laughs> on that offense. But when they have a bad day like they did against this in the scrimmage in the second week, do you get worried or do you just chop it up to, again, just having an off day? You know, Sam Pittman said when you get worried is if one side of the ball continues to dominate. I remember years ago I was on the Southwest Conference press tour. We were in Austin. Fred Akers was the coach at Texas at that time. And he was worried because they'd had two preseason scrimmages and both of them the defense had dominated. And he said, you don't like to see that. You want some back and forth. So I don't think there's a real issue with what happened in that. I think he'd be, Pittman would be worried if the defense got dominated again in that second scrimmage. Well, this is to be expected. When they scrimmage, someone's got to win. So the offense is going to win or the defense is going to win. Again, how do they put all these pieces together and play someone other than themselves? <laughs> well, you're never going to know until you play. But what you do is now each one has had their turn. And you come back to each one of them and say, hey, you know, don't get, you tell the defense, don't get complacent this week. And you tell the offense, look what happened to you when you got complacent. So hopefully they'll all arrive on game week, you know, in the right frame of mind and ready to play. Yeah, you know, Barry Odom was happy with his group. The defense again coming out as the victorious side of the ball on the scrimmage on Friday. So let's talk about the defense, Mike. You know, if you ask most fans where the problem is likely to be on defense, what are they going to say? They're going to say linebacker. Why? Because Scooter Harris, Scooter Harris is gone. And while a lot will be expected of Bumper Poole in his junior year, Barry Odom needs some other guys to step up. And a lot has been said about this guy, Oklahoma junior transfer Levi Draper. This kid was a four-star out of high school, didn't play much with the Sooners. But there are hopes that with the transfer, he's going to do a lot better here at Arkansas. Pittman says the young man tends to overcomplicate things, but is starting to come around. I just talked to him about, hey, man, your job as a linebacker, go make a tackle, you know, and, uh, you know, all this spilling to spill to do this, to do that. Hey, man, can't tackle the ball, the guy with the ball, you know, and uh, and I thought he did that today. I think, to be honest with you, I think he's doing a lot of processing. If you're processing, you're not reacting. And in this league, if you're processing, you're getting beat. And Barry Odom says the linebackers are the key to stopping those gouge plays that have hurt Arkansas so much over the past few years. Those guys 
have to make tackles. I'm going to take a break. I love that he said if you're processing in this league, you're going to get beat because how does that so define what we have seen with this defense? They were over-processing and getting beat the past couple of years. All right, I'm going to talk about the guys behind him, those secondaries, because they're the most experienced guys in that group, the most experienced guy, is junior Joe Fauché, not counting, of course, Jerry Jacobs because he's a grad transfer, but despite them being mostly juniors and sophomores, they've got some talent. Defensive coordinator Barry Odom told us earlier in the week he's always cross-trained those guys in the secondary because he doesn't want to label a guy just a corner or just a safety. He thinks it's important that guys know what the other guys are doing on the field. I feel like as a group, everyone knows what they're doing at every position. I feel like everyone's playing every position. You know, you can play middle safety one day. You might end up playing boundary safety one day. You might end up playing strong safety one day. You might play nickel or nickel might end up playing corner. You know, it just all depends, you know. Uh, yes, what he really emphasized that our defense can be flexible and we have to be flexible guys too. We have to make sure we know the whole defense inside out. One thing that Odom stresses is not giving up those big plays, Mike. He said, look, teams are going to give up those five to seven to 15 yard plays, but don't let those turn into 70, make a tackle, get a guy down. He also said that if the defensive line is better with pressure, the secondary is going to be better. Why do you think he says that? Well, because it's true. I mean, those the guys up front kind of determine a lot. And if you're behind them, yeah, you got to rescue them sometimes, but you don't want to do it a lot. Um, I still think, you know, the main thing is you can't, I don't care on, on either side of the ball, but especially on defense, you can't be thinking about some play you just messed up when the next play is about to happen. And Pittman's talked about that a lot. You, you, you do something wrong and then you turn it into two, two plays in a row, three plays, because you're thinking about that instead of playing. You, you play football on instinct, and when you, that brain starts kicking in and you start thinking about all this stuff, that's when you've got problems. From our perspective, Mike, is it fair to say on the offense and the defense, tight ends, linebackers, your biggest question marks? Absolutely. Those are the two spots, and that's probably what preseason is mainly all about is you got to develop some kind of depth at those positions because in this year, this, this season, depth is huge. Absolutely. All right, we got game times this week, so that was exciting. Arkansas's game times for a few games announced this week. Georgia will be a 3 p.m. kickoff. Mississippi State will air at 6.30. The game for Old Miss is still either going to be 11 a.m., 2.30, or 3. Texas A&M is a 6.30 kickoff, and Tennessee is a 6.30 kickoff as well. Mike. There is no 11 a.m. kickoffs on this list except for possibly at Ole Miss. How exciting is that? Well, it's good, but uh, you know what the problem with that 11 a.m. kick? It was those people in the north end zone mm -hmm. because they built this thing and then they went, uh-oh, you're looking right into the sun at 11 a.m., which we had yeah. a lot of that last <laughs> year. Well, it's not going to be an issue this mm -hmm. year because there's not going to be hardly anybody yeah. there, but next year... <laughs> Hopefully this program will be solid enough next year that this trend will continue and we won't yeah. see those 11. So Arkansas gets some evening games and only a handful of people are going to be there to watch. But it'll be cooler. Yeah. And, you know, 11 a.m. kickoffs, we've had enough to go around. We can catch a break there. All right, Mike, thanks so much. It was